Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the GMI Hub Online. Tonight, we're going to have an amazing conversation with three amazing people. We have first Jody Cross, and he's going to be talking about his experience as a musician and a minister. We got Michael Taylor, a great pastor, and also we've got Mike Kleinhaus. And th these three guys are going to take us today on an incredible journey as we explore what happens now after this uh, extremely strange and troubling time we've been through. What's it going to be like for the ministry and the church as we move far ahead, move ahead? And my name is Dale Borland. And I'm Cheryl Duick. I'm so glad that you're able to be with us. Remember what we were talking about today is not a private conversation. So please go ahead and share this experience. And if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. We'll be happy to forward them here and, and have them answered. So while we have these three lovely men with us, um, I would do normally an introduction, but you know what? I'm gonna ask you all to quickly just describe your current positions right now. Um, we'll start with, since we're going down the list, Jody. welcome. <laughs> hey, thanks you guys, thanks for having me on. So I am the uh, Pastor of Worship and Leadership Development at Cornerstone Baptist Church in Aurelia. I've been there for 10 years. And actually, I'm in transition. I'm taking a lead pastor role of South Shore Bible Church in Barrie, Ontario. And so transitioning to that role in about another four weeks. So I actually have one week left at Cornerstone. And then I'll be hopping on as the lead pastor as of Thanksgiving in Barrie. Wow. And for that, for you, it's amazing. Uh, how are you feeling about this transition? How are you feeling? Oh, it's great. Uh, I mean, you know, there's lots of mixed emotions, but um, the Lord is in this and he's called us. And uh, so I've been actually really giving worship leadership for 32 years in ministry. And this is a brand new position for me that will involve preaching and worship leading as well uh, in this lead pastor role. So lots of new changes, but we're really excited about it. Absolutely excited. Oh, let's hear from Michael Taylor. Tell me about you, buddy. Very good. I'm, I'm Michael Taylor. I'm at Islington Evangelist Center. That's at... Uh, uh, near Woodbine Waste Track in that area of Toronto, uh, 427 and Rexdale. I've been there full time for 12 years, part time about six years. Before that, I was at Canada Christian College as their Dean of Music. Before that, I was working at another church. And before that, I was working at another ministry. And uh, so we're adjusting to this new uh, time that we're living in here. And, uh, and so I'm just glad to be able to serve and give my insight wherever possible. Very good. Beautiful. And Mike Kleinhaus, all the way from Lindsay, Ontario. Can you give us a little brief about who you are, where you are? <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm Mike Kleinhaus and I'm the, uh, the planting pastor at the uh, Center Community Church in Lindsay, Ontario. And we were uh, a fairly young church. We were, uh, we were moved up to this area five years ago, my uh, wife and, and kids. And uh, before that, we were in Hamilton for oh, 20 years. Um, and uh, 15 years at uh, 17 years at uh, Houston Street Baptist Church. I was the youth pastor there. I also led worship there, and uh, did a lot of work in the uh, in the inner city in Hamilton. And uh, and now we're sort of in Lindsay, planting a church similar to, to Houston, a very much a, a neighborhood church that's focused on the south end of Lindsay because there's a whole lot of um, whole lot of uh, poverty and social issues. So that's uh, sort of what we are are focused on. And um, yeah, so it's been. Uh, it's been a good five years and it's amazing how fast time goes and it's amazing how many pickup trucks are up in the up in this area so <laughs> well from your different seats, all of you come from different churches a church plant and roughly what's the size of your churches right now just out of curiosity mike you're at a church of yeah so right now um on a sunday we average about 40 um through the week we have interaction with probably another 40 to 60 people that may not come out on a Sunday, um, but would still call, uh, call the center their home church. Awesome. And Mike Taylor? At our church, we'd say around about 400 if we combine both services. Um, but since COVID, things have changed a lot. And so we're still trying to encourage people to come out. And understand. And Jody, you got a, two perspectives. <laughs> yeah, I, I've actually got almost two and a half perspectives in the sense that so our church, Cornerstone, meets in two locations, so about 650 people between the two sites. And the church plant that I'm going to be part of has about 135 people. Wow. Wow. So, so just coming from the different perspectives, it's going to be very interesting to hear how you've handled COVID, how, what you've experienced, what your churches have experienced, what your music ministries have experienced. So 
I guess my next question would be COVID. How has <laughs> how have your churches adapted to this pandemic and what has been the the end result of it? What has been the results that you have been seeing? That's probably two questions. Um Let's see. I'll jump in. Nemo. Which one wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go first. I'll go first. Um, okay. Yeah, when, th when things first started off, um, we, uh, because our, our church was small, or is small, um, we thought we'd be able to sort of fly under the radar and, uh, and continue meeting in person. Um, unfortunately, we, uh, we rent from a, uh, one of our partner churches, and, uh, and they, their elders board decided to, to close the building. And so that sort of pushed us out. Um, and totally understandable. And, and in fact, they're probably a little bit ahead of the curve and recognized what was coming. Um, and uh, for us, we were optimistic that we'd stay in media in person. Uh, so we scrambled and started uh, really looking for ways to, to meet online. Um, we're part of the, uh, the fellowship of each evangelical Baptist churches. And they were great in um, tracking down different resources, tracking down different platforms. And so we started uh, pre-recording our services on Thursday and using um, a platform called Church Online and, uh, and streaming our, our Sunday services at our, our regular meeting time at four o'clock. And uh, it was at the outset, it was going, I'd say really uh, quite well. Uh, we had most people that were joining in, but as, the, as COVID continued on, we noticed the numbers start to drop a little bit and, uh, and, and other people, um, yeah, uh, for for whatever reason, uh, we're no longer um, we're no longer tuning in. I think part of it was, you know, they can pick and choose which one they're going to watch because it's like a it's like six hundred channels on satellite TV. And which one do I want to watch? Which church do I want to go to today? And so that was a little bit of a struggle, um, but uh, yeah, we adjusted. In the summertime, we um, once the parks opened up, the end of July, we started meeting outside. And that, that was a huge blessing. And uh, uh, so we've been uh, in person and live since uh, the end of July, still recording those services. So that was a whole new issue because now we're recording outside in a public setting. There's wind, there's dogs, there's kids. It's all sorts of things. Um, so we've had to end a couple of times it was raining. So we, we had to scramble and, and adjust. And uh, uh, the word I think a lot of people were using was pivot. <laughs> trying to, to move and adjust with what's going on. So, so that's sort of where we are right now. We're still meeting outside till the end of September, still putting things online. Um, and then hopefully in the beginning of October, we'll be back inside in person and, uh, but still recording our services. Awesome, wow. Um, Michael and Jody, how have your churches adjusted to well, COVID? What did they go through? Well, when we had the shutdown, we had never streamed live at all. And uh, so we had to adjust really quickly because we knew that we had to keep in contact with the congregation. And so for the first couple of weeks, um, we had a church that rents from us. And so with the two congregations, we were able to uh, get some help from their people who've always been videotaping their churches. Um, and after a couple of weeks, we had to figure out how are we going to do it. And uh, so it was quite uh, a, a challenge trying to get equipment working and new things going, especially when um, you go to amazon.com and a lot of the uh, equipment that was required for media was either sold out, not available, because you're competing against all these other churches and schools that require media equipment. And so uh, we eventually you know, found people that could put their electronic minds together, invent things, put things together and make things work. And so uh, that was quite interesting. Uh, the other th adjustment for us was because we were limited to how many people could be in the building for recording, um, I think it got down to a point where we could only have five people. Mm -hmm. um, so when you consider you've got to have a camera crew, um, you've got to be selective about who you can choose from the band to make up your total team of five that's allowed in the building because you're always concerned that somebody's going to come into the building and say, hey, you've got six people in there. Uh, somebody has to leave. So, you know, trying to abide by all the legal uh, uh, regulations was important for us and, and we've abided by that and we're still doing that. Um, so sometimes you feel like you're you're dancing, but you're 
you're handcuffed and uh, you're limited in what you can do. And uh, I guess we'll talk about trying to sing with a mask on later. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Jody, how are things with you? How are things with your church, with Cross? I was in the States actually on March the 12th, came home on the evening, Thursday night on the 12th. It was at an emergency board meeting on March the 13th. And I actually wasn't feeling well. And this is before, I think they said, if you'd been out of country, you should quarantine. And I had been in the States. And so um, things happen really fast, as probably everybody remembers on the, those couple of days on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so right away, we started recording our services. I was actually in isolation for two weeks, along with my wife and one of our other worship leaders. Uh, he, he scrambled to pull a team together. And as Michael said, we had... Uh, a limit of five people. So there was three people in the band, a camera operator and a sound operator, and that was it. Those were the only people in the room. And then we had actually already been doing online services to a, a pretty good degree in terms of video. We weren't doing such a great job at audio um, because we didn't have a second soundboard to do live to internet sound mix. But so we actually took all of our equipment and we took our cameras that we had and we actually focused it on, on the online experience for people. And did that really from March the, I guess, 15th, right up until the 21st of June. And once word came in the Simcoe Muskoka region that we're in, that we could open up our doors again, we started all new protocols in terms of screening and seating and social distancing so that people could come actually back into the building. I think we started out with about 120 people on June the 21st. And that was an amazing day to see the look on people's faces. They were just actually back in the building. And for the first time, and actually even as recently as last Sunday, we've had people come back, and this is their first time physically in the church building in about the last five, five and a half months. So it's, it's really wonderful to see people back. And that number has grown for us to having about just 220 people or so in our facility that we're allowed to have that with our 30% capacity. And so currently, uh, we have a live uh, team, live worship team, live preaching, but before it was a recorded three-piece band with three songs, recorded message, and a lot of video editing to put all the component pieces together. So uh, I think, you know, we said earlier in, in the podcast or the webcast that, you know, things are evolving. Things have always actually been evolving really since March. I found that almost every week or two, there's something new that's happening that we're trying, some curveball from the government, something that we're trying to adapt with. And uh, so it, it's really been a, just a, an exercise in flexibility and patience and innovation and creativity, but God's been really good through, through all of it. That's awesome. You answered all my other questions now. <laughs> I'd like to remind everybody who's watching at home, thank you so much for watching. We are having a really good conversation. I think it's gonna get more, uh, as we talk about more things, we got Jody Cross, Michael Taylor, and Mike, Kleinhaus, and they're um, all pastors and all have music experience and leadership in the church. Um, and I want to thank you guys for watching. We also remind you that we are going to rebroadcast this on our YouTube channel, GMI Hub Online, so you get a chance to watch it if you miss any of this. And also there's lots of other resources up there as well for you to check out from our previous interviews. Now, I also want to remind you that this is not just between us and a group that we have here, but this is for everyone. So please share this experience with everybody that you know. Uh, maybe there's people that are interested in church ministry or music or whatever, that you would have an opportunity to bless them with this as well. Uh, now, as I, I was thinking about what Jody was saying, um, there's, um, you have the church ministries have been affected by the COVID and the music and creative arts. What are they handling it? What are they doing now uh, functioning through this season? Maybe unpack that a bit more um, as we look at what changes have been made, any um, to compare to previous to now kind of thing. Um, speak from your perspective, from the size of the church, whatever sizes your churches are, and you know what, uh, what the church plant, even in the long-term churches are doing at this time now, what is the, um, the plan or the strategy you're seeing happening? Well, from our point of view, um, what, what we've done is uh, we've been have, we had to be strategic about everything to conform to all the regulations. So for example, some practical things on the stage, we actually put uh, you know, markers on the stage where people would actually stand. We measured it out, made sure it was six feet apart from this marker to that marker. Um, you know, you put the drummer over by the side, um, <laughs> uh, even down to what mics we used and how we would share the mics if mics are shared. 
Um, but we had to be very strategic and, and sensitive to, to people as, as, as musicians, because what, what I found is um, it was mentioned that we have to be flexible and have patience. But I think uh, for us as musicians, we also had to put on a pastoral hat and be sensitive because there was uh, an underlying fear. Um, because if you listen to the news long enough, um, there's an underlying uh, fear of being next to the person and people don't always speak their mind but you approach them and you can see them backing off saying don't touch me don't hug me and so there's new things that we had to put in to make sure that people were safe and they felt comfortable because if you're not comfortable you couldn't minister properly mm -hmm. that's a very good point <laughs> a very good point because uh, there are people that you're right there is an underlying fear that exists and you know, some people go, well, as long as this is here, I don't want to go anywhere and don't touch me and don't come, make sure we're six feet apart. Yeah, you're, you're very right about that. Um, Mike, what have you seen? Yeah, for us, um, one of the first things that we, we, we saw were, uh, like, we only have uh, a, a small number of musicians, myself being one of them. Um, and uh, we have uh, another team, uh, a husband and wife, and right from the get-go, they said, you know what, we really don't feel comfortable um, leading online or leading, uh, leading in front of a camera. Um, and so they, uh, so they stepped back. So that, that, that has meant that myself and another gentleman in the church, he and I have been leading worship now every week for the last, well, since, since this has begun. Uh, we had a couple weeks off where um, one of our partner churches, well, where they uh, they took uh, the the lead in the service and they did the music and everything. So that was nice because it was all recording. We just jammed it all together. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it has been a little bit of a grind. Once, um, once that whole bubble thing came in, to, came into effect, um, that made it a little bit easier because uh, the gentleman, he and I, we live next door. And so we said, Hey, we're going to be in the same bubble. And also because we like to have campfires in the backyard. So we said, this is great. So we went from being six feet apart on, on Sunday or for the recording to standing next to each other and, and everything being sort of back to normal. So that, that's been, that's been good. Um, but yeah, it's uh, one of the, one of the things that um, has affected us the most probably is uh, not so much our, our Sunday, but um, we would uh, have a midweek uh, worship practice, music practice, and which we opened up to the congregation as well as to the, the community. And so we would have other people who would come in who were learning instruments, who were wanting to learn the songs. And, uh, and that hasn't been taking place for the last month well, since March. Um, and I've had a number of people, from, both from the community of also in the church, saying how much they miss that ministry. And so we're really looking forward to having that opportunity to, to, to start that up again. Uh, we were hoping to do some backyard stuff before the, uh, the end of the summer, but... Um, yeah, that didn't that didn't materialize. Um, but uh, yeah, the one one thing that you said, Michael, about uh, being able to minister to people for where they're at and how they feel comfortable, and that's something that I noticed um, within our congregation that there are some people who really don't feel comfortable coming back to uh, back to church in person just yet. And so that's why we say we're going to continue doing online stuff to, so that we can minister to them and not overlook them. Um, and not to uh, say, you know, you know what, you need to toughen up or get out here because, you know, this is where the church is. We just have to say, no, we need to adjust so that we can minister more fully uh, to the whole body and not just to the ones that we, you know, that, that maybe think like us or, or, or react the same way that we do. So, yeah. Being sensitive to their needs, and that's really important, I think. Yeah. And Jody, let's hear from you. Yeah, one of the biggest learning curves for us was actually what it meant to to lead worship in front of a camera in an empty room. And our facility is relatively big, so it felt like a bit of a cavernous space. Hmm. So we actually took our equipment and ripped it all apart, and we actually uh, reassembled ourselves in one of the corners of, of the platform. So we used percussion, uh, myself on an acoustic and a keyboard player. And for the longest time, it was the three of us. We got into this this rhythm. And so it meant out of about 20 or 25 people on the worship team that three of us were really doing it for many of the early weeks. And so one of the things that happened was the team just, uh, most of the team weren't actually playing their music. Some of them weren't comfortable coming back. And some of them, uh, I think, were just a little nervous about what it meant to even be in front of the camera. So eventually we started to rotate a few people in, but 
that was a huge learning curve to actually be looking into the lens of a camera and knowing that there were, you know, 100 or 600 people behind that lens watching. That was a very difficult thing. And uh, you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about, Michael, and, and uh, you know, yourselves just, just all agreeing that uh, how does this translate and how does this, how does this come across? Is it authentic? Um, and, you know, as we watched the service, we said, okay, it, it actually looked pretty authentic. And, and over the weeks, we actually got a little more comfortable with doing that, knowing that God would even use a taped, a taped uh, you know, three songs on Wednesday on Sunday morning when it was broadcast, it would actually be pretty effective. So it actually helped us to be very dependent on the Lord and to pray and say, God, use what we're going to put down and record. And uh, we watched people being encouraged. The other thing that we did was we started something called Worship at Home Wednesdays. And we jumped onto that pretty fast in March. And we said, if people can't gather, we want to gather uh, them to us in our homes. So uh, my wife and my daughter and I, we did this thing called Worship at Home Wednesdays, where we did a half an hour service midweek to encourage people. So we sang four songs, read scripture, prayed together, talked really quite just, uh, you know, homey and, and real friendly from our, our living room, set up some musical instruments and that type of thing. And had a number of people that were watching with us for about 14 weeks. So th those were uh, some things. And, and then as we opened up, obviously there was a lot of changes with the team and plexiglass and, and all sorts of things like that. But, but it's been an evolution since then. Wow. That's an amazing journey. And it's something that I think a lot of churches have struggled through, trying to figure out how to negotiate this and navigate. Yeah. Did you find, um, and, and I find this is interesting, did you find you had to, um, outside of changing your position, like where you were physically set up, um, did you have to change, can I say your production, I don't want to call it production, but I'll say that for lack of a better word. Did you have to change, I guess I'll say the look of what you were doing in order to be more effective online or less effective or to be as, a, as authentic to your audience as possible? Did you find you had to change any of that? I found that we did in order to accommodate the kind of a camera equipment we had. Um, in order for everyone to fit in on the lens, we had to come a little closer together. And so there are some adjustments that we physically had to do. Um, sometimes you make adjustments uh, when there's not a camera there, but I found that once we realized we had to almost like, well, for the lack of a better term, put on a production hat and look through the lens of the camera and see how it would really look. You go, ah, oh, that's not working. We need you to move over. We need this. We need to change that. Uh, so we had to make adjustments that way, uh, which was important because we realized that's important. Also, audio is important. Um, if people can't hear you properly, um, you've got to make adjustments to that. But yes, we had to make adjustments in that regard. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mike and Jordy? Did you find that you had to make that, those kind of adjustments as well or any other adjustments outside of the physical positioning? Yeah, we, um, going to, just getting in front of the camera um, and, and the equipment that we were using, uh, we started off with like basically a SLR or DSLR um, high-end camera that didn't have a, an external mic jack. Um, so the sound quality for the first couple of weeks was was quite poor, but then we've um, we were able to to purchase some new equipment that improved the uh, the quality. Um, one of the things that we that we did, and I, I I'd be curious to hear from you and Michael uh, and Jody, um, we tried to do it everything in one take, where we would do our, our you know our first set of songs, um, but even if there was a, even if we messed up in one of the songs, we we continue on. We wouldn't sort of go back and um, edit that out um, and and that was that was intentional for us to try to have that authentic you know this is who we are this is the style that we're doing um, and yet we're going to make a make a mistake or two but um, you know we we're still uh, we're, we're still worshiping um, we I shouldn't say we didn't there's a few times where we just messed right up and we stopped <laughs> and started over again that was that was one of the nice things about uh, about uh, recording uh, pre-recording but um, yeah for you guys did you guys do that I, I, I think you've touched on a very important word being authentic um, for us we had not done live streaming before and so you're trying to compete with all of these 
other things that you've seen on TV. That's in your mindset, but you know, you can't do that because, you know, other churches on TV may have, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. to do that. Um, I think the key was being authentic because people can see right through that. And um, were there mistakes? Yeah, there were mistakes. And sure, if it was a really large mistake, then yeah, of course, we would start all over again. But um, I, I think the key thing was to have an imagination, realize what you're doing is, first of all, unto the Lord, yeah. that real people are going to see this. They, their hearts need to be touched. And so just worship the Lord, even though you don't see people in the audience and you're staring down the barrel of a lens and uh, just trust God that if you just worship him, um, that it will come across and it'll be interpreted on the other side that people will begin to worship the Lord and be a part of whatever you're doing at that particular time. Yeah. Let's move forward to Easter. Or actually we're moving back to Easter and then we're gonna move forward to Christmas. What happened for Easter at your churches? Well, what didn't happen was we didn't have our large scale production. And so um, we had our pastor minister on Friday and on Sunday. Uh, and we ministered songs that were related to the season, you know, the resurrection as well as about the cross. So it, it will be an Easter that I will never forget, or we will all never forget. Um, I think one of the things it did for us personally, and, and maybe the churches, we, we began to realize that we were getting back to the basics of what it's all about. And so I, I think that the message of Easter, the important part of, mess, the part, part of uh, Easter was the most important thing. And so it's nice to have all the bells and whistles, but I think this caused us to concentrate on the essentials of why did Christ come? What was the purpose? And uh, really just bring that home to people in a more concise manner. Mm -hmm. Wow, very good. Um, Mike and Jody, did you find that similar as well for Easter at your churches? Yeah, definitely. Uh, for us, the... <laughs> You know, obviously for, I think, pretty much everybody, Easter is the biggest celebration in terms of volume, in terms of the songs you do, choirs, et cetera, et cetera. And it felt very different. So we were, you know, that was April the 12th. I was just checking back actually on the date that that was, because uh, that, seems, that seems like a million years ago now. But that was pretty early on. And, uh, you know, we, we just were reminding people that this was not normal, but the gospel hasn't changed and God is still worthy. And so we were still going to celebrate his resurrection and lift up the name of Jesus. And even with acoustic guitars and a little percussion kit, you know, and I realized through the, this whole COVID thing that, that worship doesn't need the big production, doesn't need the big band. And it's true authentic responses from people's hearts as we encourage and facilitate and encourage people to do that, to lift that up to the Lord. And in those early days, it was people in their living rooms. And uh, so that was weird, not having the shouts and the voices and the hands raised and people clapping. But, but we encourage people just to know that, you know, Jesus is, is real. He's alive. And uh, the gospel is true. And we worship him even with a few instruments, even though we're scattered. Uh, we still went ahead and did that. Um, we had a video that we used, which was encouraging to people. I'm just looking at the songs we did. And we still sang, Christ the Lord is risen today. And actually, we, um, on Easter Sunday, we did a, a pre-taped baptism uh, for uh, two, two boys. Uh, so actually, it was two dads and two boys um, with our pastors. They were baptized. So they did that, I think, on a Thursday when, again, there was five people in the room with like, one camera guy and, and the people that were being baptized. And uh, so we spliced that in. So we had that, that celebration of new life in Christ on Easter Sunday. That's a great story. I love that. Um, and I just want to remind everybody who's watching at home, thank you for joining us. This is a GMI Hub Online. We have uh, three of our panelists today, Jody Cross, Michael Taylor, and Mike Kleinhaus. These gentlemen are all pastors and all different sizes and capacities, and they all have musical ministry backgrounds, so it's an incredible opportunity for us to share and chat with these guys. Now, uh, I thought about the, the ministries and what you've been going through and the, the benefits or the losses in this season, and have these things, you know, um, are they relatively the, what's, what's happening? Is it going to be the same? Are you going to keep some of them? Are you going to try and get back to some of the old stuff? What, what's happening with your, with your mindset? One of the things that we've added 
uh, we're not going to lose uh, being online. Uh, one of the primary reasons for uh, keeping online church now that we're doing it is because of those that are still hesitant to come back to church. And so we want to minister to the congregation. So uh, it's kind of like a double barrel ministry. We're going to minister to those that will are able to come on a Sunday morning and, and stream that live, as well as minister to those that are, are at home. And we've given them that choice uh, so that they can do that. So there are definitely some changes, but changes for the good that we will keep. And we'll continue to encourage people to come out. But uh, that is an added ministry that we will continue to do, is to minister to those that are at home and, and can't come out. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to do the same thing, um, and uh, which is... Uh, I, at the outset of our, of our church plant, we, uh, I shouldn't say we, I was, I was more of the driving force saying, I don't want to do too much online. I want this to be, you know, in person, very relationally based. I want it to be face to face and uh, getting out into the neighborhood and meeting, meeting the community. Um, and, uh, and our church has done a great job of doing that, but we, you know, we still see that uh, some people are a little bit reticent to come out on a Sunday. Um, but we've noticed with the having an online presence that uh, some of those people who may not want to come out to the church building because it's kind of odd, kind of freaky, I don't know what goes on in there, they, they will look at something online and they will watch something, even if it's like a, a five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute video. Um, and so we're, we are going to continue uh, uh, recording our service and, and posting it. And uh, even after we get back to meeting in person, and just as Michael was saying, um, there will be some people that I know that are not going to want to come out in person for a while yet. And uh, we still want to minister to them and bless them and, uh, and, make, and let them know that they're still part of the body as well. And that they, they have a, a very important part uh, in the place of the body of Christ. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to continue, uh, can continue recording, even though it's not my favorite, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> we don't always get to choose our favorites. It's the pivot thing again, right, Mike? It's the pivot, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say, Jody? What's going on with you? Yeah, one of the things that we tried was just this whole idea of engaging our congregation. And because they couldn't sing, we had them in the room. We had 200 people in the room watching. At first, they were watching the video of our team leading while I was in the room. And we decided that we were going to hand out percussion instruments. So we bought little egg shakers, and there were some kids' toys from the Sunday school room, little mini tambourines and some some waves or some uh, flags and some little, yeah, I guess little banner things that they could wave. And so we handed them out to people as they came in after June the 21st when we gathered. And we encouraged the whole congregation to basically be one big rhythm section. And so I was there watching our, our team on the video and I had a, a large tambourine making a lot of noise and kind of setting the rhythm in the room. And then people were raising their hands, clapping their hands, shaking these little egg shakers. And that's been great. We've been doing that for about two months now. And just that's kind of, be, Become part of our culture that people are engaged that way even though they can't sing uh, that they can still you know worship kind of by making this noise with these instruments so that's one thing I think is going to keep keep on uh, the church plant that I'm going to be serving in they had met in one service and now actually they're going to meet they're meeting in two obviously because of spatial limitations and so that's probably something that will last for a while in the new setting that I'm going to because they have uh, space confinements and um, the other thing that we discovered was we had been doing some pre-service uh, taped announcements. Mm -hmm. And now that we're back live, we're actually still doing that. And worship leaders often talk about where do you put the announcements in the service? Because they, they tend to get you know, in the middle of the service and they tend to interrupt the flow and that type of thing. So what we've been doing of late is been doing a, a midweek recording of pre-service announcements that we show about two or three minutes just before the service starts. People have been coming early to get their seats because it's assigned seating. They're sitting there watching the screen, the announcements come on, and now the announcements are done. And then we start the service with a call to worship. So that's been a great thing. I think we're going to keep that as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. If I can add something, the other adjustment we've done is before March, our services were longer, but we've shortened them, uh, compromised so that it, it's, it's good for the live uh live streaming but it's it's long enough for 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 those that are are, are attending so we, we've adjusted the length of the service uh for regarding announcements we decided to put all of our announcements at the very end of our live service so that it didn't interrupt the middle of the worship so we go straight from worship 
into uh, uh, the sermon. And at the very end, before people are leaving, we'll give you the, announcement, the announcements that way. Very cool. That's, that's what we did. So we also changed the order mm -hmm. as well as the length of service. Mm -hmm. So now let's fast forward to Christmas. And some, some, place, some places, it's too early to talk about Christmas. Some, they're, they've been talking about it since August. <laughs> what do you foresee happening during the Christmas season? Um, and I ask that because some churches have traditions. And um, they do their traditional, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The cantata or mm -hmm. traditional presentation. You know, um, and, you know, people have come accustomed to those traditions, but what if those traditions can't happen because of COVID? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think your church will do? For us, it's the, the great unknown. <laughs> we've never... <laughs> no kidding. <yeah. laughs> we've never been this way before. Yeah. Um, because with our Christmas productions, we put a lot of rehearsal time into it. There's a lot of engagement. And uh, um, that is an interesting question. And I think one of the things that we're going to be doing is, is just being sensitive to where people are at. Because people are still not comfortable just attending, let alone attending weekly rehearsals. Uh, so uh, we're still playing that by ear at the at the present moment. No music pun intended there, playing by ear, but uh, that's what we're going to do. That sounds fair. Um, can you do, right? How about you, Jody or Mike? Well, I'm about to um, assume this role, and I'm assuming that we're going to uh, look at the four Sundays of Advent, as we would normally do in this new setting. And so we'll, we'll celebrate Advent. And I can see us doing Christmas concert. You know, there's a spiritual hunger. And one of the things that COVID has done, that's a whole other discussion, is, is what, what is God doing in COVID? And what's God doing in our neighborhoods? And what's God doing through the church? But I think one of the things that he's doing is he's making people ask questions and be spiritually hungry. I know as I walk my dog in the neighborhood that I live in, I, I'm praying for about four or five different sets of neighbors right around me that I've had gospel conversations with. In fact, um, a couple of them have already talked about coming to church with us when I start, but I'm actually looking forward to, to inviting them to a Christmas concert. And so, you know, the, the team, as long as they're behind plexiglass, we can sing all we want. And no better time than at Christmas to have a Christmas concert for people who are searching and asking and longing and, and you know, they're, they're filled with anxieties and fears and uh, just to proclaim the gospel. So that's what I'm hoping happens in our setting. We'll do Advent celebrate the incarnation and uh, put on a couple of great Christmas concerts. That's fabulous. Yeah, th that challenge is behind the plexiglass. I always imagine these people like mm -hmm. they're in a terrarium or something. Yeah. But uh, you have to do what you have to do, right? Uh, Mike, what's yeah. your thoughts on what you, how do you see, foresee Christmas? Yeah, well, it's going to be, I know it's going to be different than what we've done in the years past because we, in uh, years past, we've combined like our, our Christmas Eve service with, uh, with our partner churches. Um, I should say, when we were planted, we were actually planted by, uh, um, supported by five different churches within Lindsay, within the ministerial. And so we've partnered with them, continue to part partner with them, um, even as we've gone forward. So uh, that has, because of size, because of uh, capacity, um, I think that will be, you know, that'll be a big shift this year, uh, that we won't be able to all meet together uh, as we have in the past. Um, one thing that, uh, that we've done uh, and that uh, was kind of fun when uh, a tradition that we brought up from Hamilton was that we go out Christmas caroling in the neighborhood and we, uh, we go out uh, knocking on the doors and, and there's, there's some, uh, some houses actually that look forward to us each year. And uh, one uh, last year, I think it was one house was like, we missed you. We didn't see you last year. And uh, they, they were out that night. So we're one thing we'll probably do this year is, is actually go out a few more times just as you're saying jody the um the hunger that's there as well as like the the need for social interaction um the need to hear other people uh it, it's 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 huge and uh, and so um to have live music even if it's just people going door to door and singing um it's it, it will have i know it will have a, a a greater impact this year and so we'll likely do that a few more times than we would um that we would have last uh, in the previous years, um, partially because we likely won't be doing um, 
uh, like a Christmas uh, carol sing uh, at the church one evening. So we're just going to take it out into the community. So, yeah. in one of our previous, again. yeah, <laughs> in one of our our previous webcasts, we had Jeremiah Rabel on there, and he is very passionate about about church because he's a uh, he's a coach for churches actually. And one of the things that he said he, he discovered or found out or encouraged with churches out west, which is where he's from, is encourage the churches to be the church outside of the church walls. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad you kind of brought up the, the Christmas caroling because I was just about to ask that. Now that we've been in COVID, um, normally churches, especially the ones here in Ontario, are used to people coming to their church and coming to hear the message. But it almost seems like, you know, God may be saying, okay, church, people are afraid to come out. Is this the chance for the church to go to them in creative ways? You know, I, I was intrigued by like, when you say Christmas Carol, I go, yeah, that makes total sense. And, and I'm going to go back in time here um, with uh, your experience, Mike, at uh, Houston Street. Yeah. Um, I didn't personally encounter this, but I did hear that you guys did uh, Christmas baskets or something like food baskets and delivered it to people. I mean, it's things like that, that are just really, really, th those are just awesome stuff that I've, that I've heard. So I was just curious to find out if any, any churches are going to be doing things like that. Like just, this is now the opportunity to reach out and, and be the church for people who, like you said, all three of you basically said their people are scared. They're scared mm -hmm. to come out of their homes. And um, I think I've seen one where the worship team or some people went to, uh, I guess, someone's house and just started singing in front of their house, Christmas caroling, except it wasn't Christmas, right? Yeah. So um, I, I just thought that was kind of cool that you mentioned that. And, and um, yeah, just in other words, is this an opportunity to create some new traditions for churches? Maybe that's I, a good question. I, I, I think it is. Um, last year, we were able to sing, I believe, in the malls, um, you know, small carol groups. So I, I think this is a time where God is saying to us, yes, we've waited for the church or people to come to the church building, but the church, as we know, are people. And it's, it's, it's for us to look for creative ways to go out, to be in the community and serve the people. Um, we give gift cards and and to those who are needy and so we serve them in that way at christmas there's a lot of giving from our church at christmas time but you're absolutely right uh this is a time where we can give maybe not only in song but in practical ways to help and encourage people and that's our yeah. song of praise if you want to put it that way <laughs> <laughs> let the music arise from our actions <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we're actually um uh, we, we partner with uh, the United Way in our neighborhood and they've, uh, they planted last year, uh, they started, they uh, planted a huge uh, community garden. Um, and they're producing hundreds and hundreds of pounds of, of vegetables and uh, even cantaloupe. I, I didn't know they could grow cantaloupe in, uh, in Canada. Um, but they've, uh, they partnered with us to help get the food out into the neighborhood because they knew that we, um, we have a lot of contacts with, with families in the neighborhood. And so we're, we've been going and we've met probably about uh, a dozen new families through this partnership. Um, so it's not so much caroling and it really doesn't have to have to do with music so much, but it is one of those ministries of getting out into the, into the neighborhood. Um, and we're trying to, to do that uh, more and more. Um, and even with school starting again, um, figuring out ways that we can meet with families that we yeah, are no longer able to because we can't be in the schools like we uh, like we could uh, in previous years. So, yeah. uh, I just want to remind everybody who's watching us. Thank you so much for tuning in the GMI Hub online. We have three great panelists tonight. We've got Jody Cross, Michael Taylor, and Mike Kleinhaus, and all of these gentlemen are pastors. And um, with the Jody has a has a background in recording artist as well, and and all three of them are doing music ministry in their church. And we just wanted to have a chance to talk to you about what, what we can expect to see in, in our different church bodies as we move ahead 
uh, in the next few months ahead as fall comes and Christmas. So we're having this conversation and hoping that it gives you some, some uh, understanding of what churches are going through. Maybe you're going through similar things yourself. Uh, but we'd like you to also to, to share this experience. Um, let people know about what, what we're doing here and, and if maybe there's somebody you know who might benefit from this or, or maybe just enjoy this conversation, please let them know. Um, go to the GMI Hub online and that's our YouTube channel. And you'll see a whole plethora of interviews there we've had before. And I think it'll be something for you to enjoy and a resource as well. So thank you for that. Um, let's get back into our conversation, shall we? As uh, Jody, you mentioned about the hunger for live performances. And I think, I don't know if it was yourself or maybe Michael, it was you that said that when you came back from out of town, you were at a, a drive-in church and people were honking horns, you know, to say amen. And, you know, I, I do recall that there were, that the door had opened for drive-in events to happen. And I think even now that the sports are starting to play or are, are in the process of playing, that's exactly what they're doing. They're doing these, the, everyone's parked outside in their cars watching on a big screen. And every time someone makes a goal, it's honk, 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 which is, which is what I've been learning about. So I'm, I'm just... I know as the weather gets cold, we won't be doing outdoor events, but do you think there'll be more opportunities for musicians to um, help participate in bringing the music back um, for, from now through Christmas, for example, um, especially if there are people that normally would be afraid, there may be other people that are hungry to, to get some more, to, to get their music out there or to, to come and bring that season. Do you think your churches would be open to things like that? One of the things that we've wrestled with is, you know, staying within the guidelines that the government gives us, but also wanting to use the permissions we have to the fullest extent. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, there's nothing stopping us from presenting music and so, you know, I think it's a great time to bring in musicians into our building. We just finished talking about actually going out with music, but um, I think people are, are hungry for gathering and they're hungry. I think musicians are hungry to play. I can't imagine if you were a full-time touring artist, what it would be like to have been shut down for so long. And a lot of people are doing little house concerts on Facebook and YouTube, that type of thing. And, and that's great. Uh, but there's nothing like being in the room face to face, hearing someone's story, hearing their music, hearing their heart. And I think there's a great opportunity for the church to uh, encourage their musicians to, to play. And uh, even, you know, just getting people into a room to, to jam and to use their, their skills again, even if it's in a rehearsal or just to uh, pick up music time, you know, as they want to worship the Lord together. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that are hungry and, and hopefully the absence of congregational singing in the absence of people playing is going to stir up a real deeper hunger when we actually get to do it again. There'll be a bit of a, a turnaround and a kind of a rebound effect that people really appreciate what we've so taken for granted uh, for so long. That's so true. What a great word. That is awesome. I, and I think I, I resonate with that because I think that's, that's truthfully what's going to come out is they're going to say, man, we took so much for granted. And uh, we, yeah, so that's amazing. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Michael and Mike, the two mics. <laughs> yeah, I think as musicians, we've uh, missed playing with one another um, in in a band, and we're we're social beings, and we we want to be involved in having fun. And so, as it was said, I think we don't miss things until it's gone or it's been diminished to to a certain stage, and. And uh, so I think that, uh, and, and for Christmas, music is, is joy, it's what it's all about. So to take the music away from Christmas is a big deal. Even if we just come together, if there's not necessarily the drama and big production, but the music has to stay. <laughs> yeah. May I use that for a segue? Cheryl, what do you think? <laughs> go for it, go for it. <laughs> we at the GMI Hub have entered into a Christmas project and we have, uh, uh, invited people to submit their songs to do this compilation project and it's something we want to encourage you as a musician to to take some time and uh and to produ present produce a song for us to put on this compilation and uh do you have any more details because i'm running out of things to think of for this this is an amazing opportunity <laughs> we will we um 
Well, we are accepting uh, submissions up until September 15th. If you're, if you are wanting to submit a song, um, submit it to song, S-O-N-G, at gospelmusicindustryhub.com. Um, if you do intend, we did say our intent, our, our notice of intention was, was done at September 1st. But if you're really, really hungry for a song, well, you know, send us a message. And we'll, we'll have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> we want to encourage, our goal is to encourage uh, the, the art of music. Um, we want to also encourage unity, community, mentorship, and talent growth. So that is why we do these, these online webcasts. Um, and that's why we have projects like the, the Christmas Compilation Project. While we have a few minutes left, um, what pastors, Mike, Mike, and Carl, Jody, <laughs> would you say to our general audience, um, who are some of whom, or most of whom are musicians and singers, um, and some involved in the music ministry, and there are others that are just watching because they can, <laughs> you know, but what would you say to them to encourage them at this time um, where, you know, fall is the beginning of, of change or pivoting or resetting or revisioning? Um, I guess, what would you say to encourage them at this time? I, I think the, uh, one of the first things I would say is you're not alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you feel like you're, you are alone, reach out. There's, there's a, a whole lot of people out there um, who are in a similar position um, who are, are looking to support and wanting to, to support and encourage others. Um, I know for, for myself here in Lindsay, we have a great ministerial and there's a number of pastors that uh, we, we come together on a regular basis to pray and to uh, make sure that each one is doing well, um, both mentally, spiritually, emotionally and so if you feel alone reach out um and because you're not alone everyone's sort of going to this uh, at the same time um the second thing i would say is uh, be open to trying different things and be open to adapting changing um get outside your comfort zone um and i, I love the idea of, of getting out and, and doing doing live music um you mentioned that earlier jody about uh, uh about uh, being outside of public and, 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 and leading worship. I think that's a, that's a great idea. So if you feel like you have a need to, um, to come together and worship with others, find a way to do so. And uh, um, yeah, cause it's, it is important. It is uh, uh, one of the things that we are created to do. We are created by God to worship. And so yeah, do that. Beautiful. Beautiful. I would, um, say that, um, I would say just to remember that God is at work. You know, this isn't this isn't some random accident. God's using COVID. He's using this time of our world. So when you feel out of control and when you feel like your ministries have been stripped down and sidelined, God's in the middle of all that we're doing and he's using it. And so that's that's just the first thing, you know, that no, the Bible says, I think it's Job 42 verse 2 says, no purposes of God can be thwarted. He's fully in control. So that's an encouragement to me that God's using it. The second thing is, I think the heartbeat behind all that we've talked about today, how we flexed, how we want to minister to our people, just really comes in this whole idea of shepherding the flock, shepherding the flock in worship or as worship leaders, as musicians, to care for them, to love them, to build them up, to encourage them, and just have that heart of a shepherd saying, Lord, how can I love your people? How can I use the gifts that I have to uh, help people? to see you and to see how great you are. And that really segues just to this whole idea that, you know, in, in the, the gospels, you see Jesus feeding the 5,000 and there's a boy with his five loaves and two fishes. And sometimes we feel like we don't have very much. I just have a little small camera. I just, I'm the tech guy at my church or my team is small, or I, we really feel like we're staggering and stumbling forward. God will use your, your efforts, how, however they are, if they're big or they're little, God will still use it. To, to help people to worship him and to see him as great as he is. And just know that um, the Lord is going to use whatever you can give him for his glory. Amen. Yeah, it's like the five loaves and two fish or two fish, two loaves, five fish. What was it? Two and five. five it's loaves, just like, yeah, and the multiplication of that. Take what you have and give that over and let God take care of the, the multiplication of your gift. Absolutely. Michael. 
Um, I would say that, um, like David said, uh, he encouraged himself in the Lord. There was a time where he, there was no one else to encourage him. And for, it's important that personally we be strong to be encouragement to other people. If we're weak, we can't help other people. And it's not only music ministers, but even pastors, uh, lead pastors are, are, are going through difficult times. Um, you know, I've heard some horror stories of which I won't, won't go into, but it, it can be difficult and depressing, especially when you stay alone and you keep everything inside. And, and especially for men, let me just speak to the men. Sometimes men don't talk. We tend to keep things inside. The ladies, I know I, I don't want to be over general, but they, they're, they'll let things out. They won't let it boil up inside. And so uh, as, as, as someone said, talk to somebody, reach out, but don't be isolated. Don't stay at home uh, by yourself. Uh, don't want, if there is a problem or a challenge that you have, uh, don't feel that the solution has to come from yourself. Sometimes just talking to someone else and airing it out um, allows another point of view to come through and you realize that things aren't as bad as you thought when you kept it all to yourself. So realize you're not alone, there is help and, and there's a lot of unknown and that can make us as men very uncomfortable because we like to fix things. And uh, when we can't fix it, it's like, what am I going to do? And so we keep it inside. Don't keep it inside. Let it out. Surround yourself with good praise and worship music. Um, and uh, just allow yourself to be ministered to. You don't have to solve a problem. Today, there is a tomorrow. And just don't give up. Be encouraged. Amen. Amen to that. Well, gentlemen, you are all absolutely awesome. I thank all of you, uh, Michael Taylor, Jody Cross, and Mike Kleinhouse, for taking the time to share your insights and to share your thoughts about, about music ministry, about church ministry, about where it's been, where it could be going uh, between now and Christmas season. And like you all said, um, we're not alone. A lot of us are maybe going through, that's a reality, a lot of, a lot of us may be going through a bit of a fear and uncomfortability, but this has been a time when um, musicians could be using their talent in a different way. Church leaders are there, you're, they're your pastors, and they want to reach out to you and they want to minister to you. So uh, definitely, um, as these gentlemen have encouraged, reach out and touch, reach out and it's like the song reach out and touch somebody's hand <laughs> you know <laughs> but pick up the phone instead <laughs> kind of idea <laughs> um we are gonna be uh back next week um with a whole different topic um on the business side actually so we look forward to having you join us then and we already talked about the christmas compilation which we hope to be launching uh, at the end of October, I believe. At the end of October, I believe, is when we said we were going to launch it. But you can stay tuned. We'll be telling you more about that. And get ready. You'll have your opportunity to actually help support musicians that have taken the time to create new songs for your Christmas season and be able to purchase those. So we will give you more information about that as time goes on. But if you're interested in learning more about Gospel Music Industry Hub, feel free to go to our website, gospelmusicindustryhub.com. We have a brand new website. It would be great for you to go and visit and check us out and let us know what you what, what you like about it. And I'd like to also encourage you to go to our channel on YouTube, GMI Hub Online, and there's a resource of videos there for you to look. Make sure you like, make comments, because that'll help support what we do. And uh, subscribe, and we thank you for the time you spent with us as a viewer. And, uh, and I, I want to thank all the, uh, the great panelists we've had today as well. Really enjoyed our time together. Gospel Music Industry Hub encourages unity, community, mentorship, and talent growth. Have a good week, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you. God bless.